Hello Makers, I'm Joe. As you probably already know, as you also probably already know, I love incorporating electronics into 3D printing. I think they go along so well together. And I've done a few projects on this channel um, and I showcase those and I also love doing lamps. I love doing lamps. There's something about LEDs and 3D printing and I just love it. So when my manufacturer approached me and asked me if I'd be willing to host a competition in conjunction with them and Craft Unique, well, <laughs> couldn't really say no now, could I? Now the design competition is simple. Well, design something that involves electronics. And if you win, well, you get a custom designed CraftBot Plus, which I can assure you is an awesome 3D printer. Now, just to give you a bit of an idea, just to kick off this competition, well, I made another lamp, of course, and I'm gonna show you guys how I did it, well, to give you some inspiration. As you always do, you start off with a sketch. I got myself a NeoPixel ring with 16 LEDs, an Arduino Nano, and about 300 meters of fiber optic cable, um, because I do want to make a fireworks type lamp. The design has to be simple using the least amount of electronics possible. The idea is to have the NeoPixel ring hidden inside the lamp and the fiber optic wires protruding um, outwards towards the top and carrying the light outside of the lamp. Once the sketch was done, design in Fusion 360 was relatively straightforward. I started off by designing a profile for the lamp, something simple. I will be using the revolve tool a lot, so all I need is half a profile. Then I import the NeoPixel and the Arduino Nano into the sketch so I can find the right placement for them. Now the parts and many others can be found on GrabCAD. Simply go there, sign up, and you can download step files for almost anything you can think of. Once I have the placement for the components in place, I'm going to first draw a line that will separate the bottom part that will house the electronics and the top part which will have the fiber optic cables in it. Then I'm just gonna draw a line at the top, chamfered at an angle to make sure the fiber optic wires come out from the top at an angle. Next, I'm gonna draw a conic curve from the base of the top part, which will be the exact center of one of the nail pixel ring LEDs, all the way to the chamfered line at the top. Then I will grab the top part profile and simply revolve it on the Z axis. This makes the whole top part complete. Now on the bottom surface of the part I just created, I will draw a circle right where I started my conic curve. This will be the size of one single LED. From there, I will simply perform a sweep. I will select the circle as the profile and the conic curve I drew as the path, making sure the operation is set to cut. Now I have the channel that will hold the fiber optic cables ready. Next, I will create a circular pattern of that channel that will hold the fiber optic wires. I select the channel I created, then I choose the axis which it's going to revolve around, which is the Z, and I set the quantity to 16, which is the same number of LEDs in the name of pixel ring. After a few little adjustments to get the right angle at the chamfer part on the top, I was happy. But to give the fiber optic cable a bit more room on the top, I drew a couple of circles and extruded them to cut out a wider exit part. Next was the base, and since I already had the parts in place, I worked around them to cut out the hole in the base. I cut out the entry to the USB wire by simply drawing a square on the side and subtracting that from the base. I then continued to project all the edges of the NeoPixel and the Nano to the base so that I can have um, the right lines to extrude in terms of holding the place for all the items, making sure, of course, that I offset all projected lines by around 0.2 millimeter for uh, better tolerances. Finally, I simply placed some notches outside of the NeoPixel ring holder so that I have room to route the wires without kinks. This was just a matter of drawing some lines going outwards from the center and then subtracting the wedges from the outer part of the NeoPixel ring holder. After some playing around and refining some details like chamfered edges, I placed the holes for the screw. Now here is a top tip when making something printable without support which in this case was important for me uh, because I need to tie the bottom part of the model to the top part with four screws but I also want to print it without supports. Now since the circle of a screw hole cannot print in midair without supports because they are recessed, I simply created a layer um, of about 0.2 or 0.3 millimeters thick. Now that layer will go where the screw hole is. The idea here is that the layer would be so thin, probably like one layer, um, and it would be very easily broken off with a hex screw uh, in order to drive the screw all the way through. And that way you can print it without supports 
and it prints perfectly fine. Next, it was time to print, so I put in some filamentum vertigo gray PLA into the Craftbot Plus, which was sent to me on loan by Craft Unique for this competition and a review and started printing. Now Craftbot printers aren't just built like tanks and extremely easy to use out of the box, but they produce some of the best quality prints I've seen in 3D printers just out of the box. Now for the lamp assembly, you will need the NeoPixel ring, which is 16 LEDs, an Arduino Nano, three wires, and a lot of fiber optic wire. Now a full roll is very cheap, it's about $7 if I recall, so I bought one and then simply cut strands between 20 and 30 centimeters long. They don't have to be perfect, uh, actually quite the opposite. The, the more different the size, the better, and you'll need quite a lot of these. You'll also need four M3 by 12 screws. Grab your wires, solder a red one to the V plus on the NeoPixel ring, a black one to the G and a white one to the N. Then grab your Nano, solder the N coming from the NeoPixel to the digital pin 5, the black wire coming from the NeoPixel into the ground on the Nano and the red to the 5 volt pin. Put everything in the base and secure it. Now I tend to use a little hot glue to keep the Nano in place but I did prepare screw holes if you have tiny screws you can just screw them in place. Next, hook up a USB cable to Nano and then to your PC. Run Arduino IDE and you can simply run some sketches from the examples library of the NeoPixel. Now in my case, I use the sketch which I found on Instructables. I'll leave a link in the video description. Now whatever sketch you use, make sure you change the pin to five or else it will not work. After you have tested that it works, use a hex key to punch the holes for the screws that we've done and then tighten the four M3 by 12 screws. Now you can switch on the lamp and you have to start inserting the fiber optic threads into the opening at the top, making sure they reach all the way down to the bottom where they hit the NeoPixel LEDs in order to get the best light possible. You're gonna have to keep on inserting quite a lot of threads until you cannot possibly fit any more. Um, I used well over, I think 150 or 200 individual strands to be completely honest. The result, well, an amazing light show and a centerpiece to any room. Now this, the inspiration to this lamp was a lamp my parents had in like the 80s and I love the effect of fiber optic, so I had to include it in a project. Now this project was something I designed in probably less than an hour and was purposefully made for this competition just to show that a beautiful model with electronics to enter this competition doesn't have to be too complex and use all kinds of components. And that is the theme of the competition, 3D printing and electronics. So design something that will incorporate electronics, print it, assemble it and showcase it. It doesn't have to be elaborate, but extra points from my end if it's functional. Now it obviously doesn't have to be a lamp as mine was just an example. All models will be judged by Craft Unique and myself. The winner will get themselves a custom designed Craftbot Plus 3D printer. And I can tell you now, the winner will be very, very happy. Designs should be submitted before the 16th of September, 2019. And when you share photos of your design on social media, make sure you use hashtag Arduino with Craftbot. And also make sure to tag myself at 3 dmakernoob at Craftbot3D and at My Mini Factory. Make sure you read all the competition information. I will leave a link in the video description for it. You are free to submit more than one design, of course, for better chances of winning. Now, from my end, just a couple of tips to help you out. Try to design something that is easily printable, possibly without supports. And any photos you take, try to take them in a nice setting. Try to focus on the model that you've created. The, the better the photos, the more eye-catching it is. That is it from my end, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I will obviously leave links in the video description to the My Mini Factory page where the competition is being held. I'll also leave a link for the uh, lamp that I did and all the parts that you need. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring the bell for notification. Good luck, and as always, happy making, guys.